That was a typical family coal mine. And there were a lot of small mines. Well, the Pittsburgh coal seam was relatively close to the surface, so it was easy to mine the coal. You mine the coal, but you also produce coal wastes. And these huge heaps of coal wastes are scattered all over the state. This is a picture taken in the 1950s of a stream in the south side of Pittsburgh, and it's completely discolored with mine acid. Nothing can live in a, a stream that's been um, polluted by mine acid drainage. And that's the leading cause of water pollution in the state of Pennsylvania today. Pictures of industry, the 1830s, 40s, 50s, showing you how ubiquitous coal was, and I'm sorry, coal smoke was from the burning of coal. It's not an attempt by the artist to hide the fact that there's a lot of smoke being produced, but rather it is a, um, a matter of pride. Let's look at, look at how wonderful it is. Look at the progress. This is a great industrial city. Now, this is a picture from the um, early, um, um, uh, late 19th century, which shows you a very bad day of very bad pollution. Um, we barely can see from Mount Washington the, the structures, the high-rise structures in the downtown. This is taken from the, uh, the uh, part of the Pennsylvania Railroad Station in downtown Pittsburgh. And this is another picture of the railroad yards. This is from the 1890s. And um, I said the railroad yards tended to be extremely polluted, as we see in this picture from a little bit later, from about 1908, 1909. This picture shows you a plant um, processing metals, and you can see how incredibly polluted it is. This is a picture of steel mills, steel mill giving off copious amounts of smoke. Um, this is a picture. 1920s, 1930s. And this is a picture that was taken after the Second World War showing you the Jones and Lachlan Mill. Um, and you can see the, here's the residences up here on the hill and then the pollution pouring out from the mill itself. You know, these people would live, who lived close to the mill, great masses of people who worked in the mill walked to work, you know, walked to work. And they lived near the mill and therefore were exposed to great amounts of pollution. There's a picture that was taken in 19... 10, showing you Munhall Hollow in June, across from the, the mill down below, and it's completely denuded, smoke blighted, as the caption says, in June. Downtown Pittsburgh in, 19, in midday, 1944, 1945, street lights on. Another picture, this is probably 41, same thing, downtown Pittsburgh, midday, very, very heavy smoke pollution. Another picture downtown Pittsburgh. This is a 1940 picture. And this is a picture of showing you the 44-story golf building and next to it a heap of cinders that descended upon the downtown um, in, a, in one year, which is almost as high, uh, a pile almost as high as a 44-story um, golf building. So the crusade against smoke becomes much more intense after 1941, and you had streetcars like we see here saying, um, smoke must go, painted on the side, better health. And here we have this picture of these women marching through the downtown with the masks on their faces, uh, covering the mouths and their noses to make it clear that smoke was bad for your health. Here we have the cleaning of some of these buildings. This is the old Pennsylvania Railroad Station being cleaned. By 1950, you can see the dramatic contrast between the carbon darkened areas and the areas where it's been cleaned. This is also from the same period of time. The golf building is cleaned there. The car, the coppers building is not cleaned yet, yeah, as is the post office still not cleaned. And you can see the contrast. 